Hello and welcome to the third uh, part of our three-part series called Wrong Think 1, 2 and 3. Today in Wrong Think 3 we're going to be looking at a very uh, uh, relevant issue that's going on in America today is the rise of critical race theory. Now this, is, uh, this Wrong Think series is focusing on religious liberty and freedom of conscience and how we as Christians can understand what is happening in the West all around us, in our students' college campuses and in our employment and our businesses around us, for us to understand what is happening around us and how we can respond as born-again disciples of Jesus Christ. We cannot change what is happening out there, but we can determine how we respond within our hearts. And so my name is Pastor Conrad Vine. Uh, if you haven't seen Wrong Think 1 and Wrong Think 2, I'd encourage you to watch those two uh, presentations as well. And uh, before we begin, it's always wise to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. So let's bow your heads with me. and will ask the Holy Spirit to bless our time together. So shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the way you love us, the way that Jesus came and lived for us and died and rose again. Father, I want to thank you for the promise of eternal life through faith in Jesus. That though all of us have sinned, though all of us have gone astray like sheep, though all of us have would haves, could haves, and should haves in our lives, I thank you that with you we can have a new chapter, that your Holy Spirit will write that new chapter of our life, that we can have a new heart, and we can have a new experience in this world and the promise of eternity tomorrow. So please, Father, as we gather here today, I ask for the gift of your Holy Spirit upon myself. I pray you'll speak through me and for me. I pray you'll speak for, you'll speak to the hearts of those who are gathered here today and those who are watching at home. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Amen. So as I said, uh, this uh, sermon is entitled Wrong Think 3. It is the third of a three-part series called, well, Wrong Think 1, Wrong Think 2, and Wrong Think 3, dealing with religious liberty issues that are relevant in early 2021. And uh, Wrong Think 1 uh, was focusing on the descent into totalitarianism here in the United States of America. Uh, Wrong Think 2 was looking at critical theory, which is driving what, much of what is happening in the streets of America today, and diversity and inclusion and what they really mean and how we respond to them as Christians. And in Wrong Think 3 now, we're going to be focusing on critical race theory. Uh, race is a very emotive topic, it's a very t a touchy topic, it's a topic that uh, catches people's attention. And so I am deliberately being very, very intentional, very deliberate in what I'm sharing with you today. I think that you would agree with me, as I begin here, that um, if you would say what is the most important thing in your life, I think for many people it would be their children. They are entrusted to us by God, and we are stewards of that divine trust. We are called by God to prayerfully lead our children into the kingdom of God. And as such, their education is very important to us in the home, in the church, and in their formal education. Dr. Andrea Luxton, the president of Andrews University, she recognizes the importance of ideology within higher education. I actually agree with her 100% in what she says. She said, I think Adventist education is more important than ever before. Why? Because education is never in a vacuum. There are always underlying ideologies that drive what happens in a school or university. And I would agree wholeheartedly with Dr. Luxon's insights in this particular statement. I want to argue today that critical theory ideology is driving US education today. It is radicalizing and indoctrinating young people nationwide into God-hating, Jesus-rejecting, Bible-burning, Christian-persecuting, conscience-denying, freedom-muzzling zealots for radical atheism. And today I'm going to look at uh, one branch of critical theory, which is critical race theory, having already looked in Wrong Think 2 at two other branches of critical theory, which were diversity and inclusion. So let's just uh, remind ourselves for a few seconds what is critical theory. But well, we saw earlier in Wrong Think 2 that in the 1950s to the 1970s, the political left shifted Marx's focus from economic imbalances between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat to power imbalances between the oppressors and the oppressed. And uh, that is known as cultural Marxism. The Frankfurt School of Critical, Mar of Critical Theory, which evolved in America from the time of Adolf Hitler onwards, where um, Marxist um, um, academics fled Nazi Germany, they came to America, and they, they developed the Frankfurt School of Critical Theory. They sought to understand why Marxism was not advancing within Western democracies. Now, critical theory does not seek, as in traditional sociological research, to merely understanding the society without changing that society. The 
goal of critical theory is to identify, to problematize, to disrupt, and to destroy anything in Western democracies with a Judeo-Christian foundation that uh, is holding back the onward march of a secular, atheist dictatorship underpinned by atheist Marxist ideology. Those related disciplines of critical theories such as critical race theory and fat studies and black studies and post-colonial studies and LGBTQ studies, etc., they build on the work of an Italian Marxist scholar called Antonio Gramsci and his concept of hegemony. Hegemony is the dominance of one set of ideas over all other ideas in society. Hence, in America's day, we hear a lot about white supremacy, which has hegemony as a dominant set of ideas that affects everything else in American society. And Gramsci wrote, and I quote, the conquest of cultural power comes before political power, and this is achieved through the concerted action of intellectual organic call-outs infiltrated into all the communication, expression, and academic media. What does Gramsci recognize? He recognized that to achieve political power, Marxists must first achieve cultural power. So the institutions of the Judeo-Christian West, including the media, academia, Hollywood, and corporations must all adopt critical theory concepts. Politics is downstream of culture. So victory in the culture wars will inevitably lead to changes in ballot box voting patterns. And therefore you can eliminate representative democracy from within. And if you look at some of the slogans, this is exactly where we are going in America. For instance, the call to defund the police. If you think about this, what are the systemic implications of defunding the police? Well, we live in a representative democracy, and when I, as a voter, and the people of my community, we cast our ballots, those ballots are added up, the lawmakers are democratically elected, they pass laws that are then upheld by law enforcement. But if you eliminate law enforcement, you work your way backwards. If you eliminate law enforcement, then it doesn't matter what the lawmakers vote because nothing is going to be upheld. You've actually eliminated functional democracy. So the call to defund the police has nothing to do with police brutality. It has all to do with el the elimination of democracy because if nobody's going to uphold the laws that are passed by your democratically elected representatives, it doesn't matter what they vote. In fact, they might as well not vote on anything at all. And you don't need to vote on anything because nothing's going to change nothing is going to be upheld. And so I want to turn now to one of the aspects of critical theory that is uh, most uh, commonly heard in the news these days. It is critical race theory. Uh, this first came through Professor Derek Bell Jr. He was the first African-American tenured law professor at Harvard and he is regarded as the fountain, the originator of critical race theory. Now his ideas have evolved over the past 30 years and they are now propagated by very well-known individuals in American academia. Robin DiAngelo wrote a book called White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism, the revisionist history of the New York Times' 1619 project, Ibrahim X. Kendi's famous book from 2020, How to Be an Anti-Racist, and ta Coates, who wrote Between the World and Me, and Delgado and Stefanczyk, who wrote Critical Race Theory and Introduction. These are the popular expressions of critical race theory in American society today. But what is critical race theory? Well, according to Britannica, it is, and I quote, the, the view that the law and legal institutions are inherently racist and that race itself, instead of being biologically grounded and natural, is a socially constructed concept that is used by white people to further their economic and political interests at the expense of people of color. According to critical race theory, Racial inequality emerges from the social, economic, and legal differences that white people create between races to maintain elite white interests in labor markets and politics, giving rise to poverty and criminality in many minority communities." End quote. Key to understanding critical race theory is grasping the difference between equity, the social justice goal of developing policy to produce equal outcomes, as opposed to equality, the now scorns liberal idea of equal opportunity, equality before the law, an equal procedure, or equal process. 
With that summary in mind, there are some core tenets of critical race theory that I just want to share with you today. It's very important as we discuss these issues that we get down to the heart of the matter. We discuss the facts, the basic concepts of what we're talking about, that we understand the terminology and the definitions, um, because we need to talk about the facts here rather than get caught up in much of the emotional discussion that goes on regarding critical race theory. So there are some key tenets of critical race theory, the first of which is the permanence of racism. Racism, according to Derek Bell and Jr., is entrenched in across all social structures in the United States. Racism for Derek Brell is a relentless fact of life, so entrenched and immersed in society that appear, it appears ordinary to people within that society. Secondly, whiteness is property. All whites, according to Derek Bell, are complicit in racism because they possess a mysterious quality known as whiteness, as a socio-political caste, and they benefit from the systemic racism that maintains their socio-economic dominance. Third, Storytelling. Critical race theory challenges the experience of white European Americans as the normative standard. For instance, being on time for work, the value and the importance of hard work, the importance of providing for and protecting your nuclear family. These are all condemned as being white European ideas. Critical race theory, on the other hand, promotes storytelling by oppressed minorities to challenge the dominant white supremacy and the social construction of race. Another key tenet of critical race theory is the rejection of liberalism and the Enlightenment. Quote, the falsity of the liberal promise, end quote, as a rationale was developed to justify white domination of persons of color by imposing white European norms as being objective and scientific on society. According to Delgado, critical race theory, and I quote, questions the very foundations of the liberal order, including equality theory, legal reasoning, enlightenment rationalism, and neutral principles of constitutional law, end quote. Critical race theory thus rejects standardized testing in schools, it rejects meritocracy, it rejects color blindness, it rejects equality before the law, it rejects equal opportunity, it rejects legal reasoning, reasoning it rejects re rationalism, it rejects the, neutra the neutrality of constitutional law, all of which allegedly maintain white supremacy. A fifth key tenet of, of critical race theory is known as interest convergence. And Derek Bell's interest convergence hypothesis argues that advances for black people only happen when such interests are in the interests when such advances are in the interests of white people. He argues that the massive progress in race relations since the civil rights movement of the 60s is actually a myth. White people who champion the interests of black people are only doing so because such actions perpetuate the white supremacy of the privileged white middle class. And therefore, no actions by white people to promote the interests of black people can ever be trusted. This is a profoundly depressing and, in my opinion, unrealistic assessment of the situation. There are many people, conservative and liberal, who are white, of good will and of Christian conscience who conscientiously do seek to advance the cause of all segments of our community. But Derek Bell's uh, interest convergence hypothesis dismisses everybody and says if you are trying to help a black person and you're white, you cannot possibly be doing it out of good motives. You're doing it to preserve your white supremacy and you're therefore intrinsically evil, and no matter what you may say about yourself. Critical race theory, um, sixthly, promotes historical revisionism, such as the New York Times' 1619 project. That is the concept that America began with the arrival of the first black slaves, and the purpose of America was to maintain and perpetuate and exploit the suffering of black slavery. The USA is thus irredeemably stained by the original sin of slavery and racism, and to perpetuate the USA is to perpetuate systemic racism, slavery, and oppression that the USA represents and therefore the USA must be torn down. And we should listen to what people like Antifa are saying. When Antifa say on the streets, no borders, no walls, no USA at all, this is one of their chants, you understand that they're not looking to reform the United States, they want to eliminate the United States with all the freedoms of conscience and freedoms of property rights and freedoms of ownership and free speech and association that come within the Bill of Rights. All of these are to be done away with as being part of a systemically oppressive and racist system. System. Critical race theory is propagated across American universities, across government agencies, by woke corporations, in diversity seminars, in implicit bias testing to children and students and communities nationwide. The influential black feminist scholar Kimberly Crenshaw is best known for her concept of intersectionality. 
that is uh, race, gender, sexuality and other identity markers are to be understood uh, as cultural constructs rather than absolute realities, yet ex oppression is experienced along all of these dimensions. In response, race is to be the dominant factor in all decisions across society, according to critical race theorists. Critical race theory rejects the biblical principle of equality before the law. The word of God says this, you shall do no injustice in judgment, you shall not be partial to the poor nor defer to the great, but you are to judge your neighbor fairly. This foundational biblical principle is based on the truth that we are all created in the image of God and therefore all have equal intrinsic and moral value before our Heavenly Father. The state must recognize that intrinsic equality and the Bible explicitly condemns the partial treatment of one group as opposed to another group, for instance, the rich getting an easier ride in the courts than the poor. Critical races theory uh, is focused on equity, that is equal outcomes for every ethnic group, regardless of input, energy, hard work, talent, education, appetite for work or culture, rejects the biblical principle of equality of opportunity and personal responsibility. The Apostle Paul says this in 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, 3.10, If anyone shall not work, neither shall he eat. Do not be deceived, he goes on to say in Galatians 6, 7, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Critical race theory also rejects the entire concept of truth per se as a white, you're a white construct, and it also rejects the concept of the nuclear family. Children are to be raised by the community, and a mother and father are merely a breeding couple, but the children are owned by the community at large, which is classical Marxist doctrine um, as expressed throughout the era of the Soviet Union. Critical race theory rejects heterosexual marriage as being a concept designed to oppress homosexual, lesbian, gay, transgender or queer or other minority groups. Broader yet, critical race theory rejects, represents an utter rejection of the gospel, the replacement of the biblical worldview with an atheist worldview, the overturning of sexual morality with sexual licentiousness and the eliminations of freedom of conscience, of freedom of worship and of freedom of speech. So what are some challenges we might say uh, we, can, we can share about critical race theory? Well, James Lindsay is an excellent social commentator and he has identified some critical objections to critical race theory. And I just want to go through some of those now with you. Uh, first of all, to the idea that racism is present and entrenched in every aspect of life in the United States. Well, racism is not prejudice based upon race or believing that your race is superior to other races, no. Critical race theory teaches that because the USA has unequal outcomes across racial groups, that the country is therefore systemically racist. No other explanation is possible or even is allowed. To offer any other explanation is in and of itself racist. Woke individuals therefore look relentlessly for the racism that must be present in every organization, institution or relationship. They problematize whatever they find, leading to bitter division and infighting. Because tolerating racism is racist, you must call out, reject and cancel those who are guilty of alleged racism, even if that individual is your closest family member. Interest convergence hypothesis. This is a profoundly destructive concept. If someone with racial privilege, such as a white European, an Asian uh, European American, uh, Hispanic, Indian, Arab, or a lighter skinned African American person becomes an anti-racist activist, the interest convergence hypothesis says they are only doing so to maintain their own privilege in society, to flaunt their own virtue, and to avoid dealing with their own racism. The interest convergence hypothesis makes it literally impossible for anyone with racial privilege to ever do the right thing. So if, if somebody is born with, with a light color skin and they are, will only ever act in the interests of racist white supremacy allegedly, and they will only ever be an oppressor, then this is essentially a genocidal ideology. This is going to lead to genocide. Critical race theory rejects free societies. Societies that value individual liberty, peace, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of movement, freedom of religion, and freedom of conscience are allegedly organized to maintain racist hegemony over oppressed marginalized groups and perpetuate inequities across racial groups. Therefore, critical race theory represents a rejection of the freedoms that we enjoy, all of us enjoy in America, regardless of where you come from. If you're an American citizen, you are protected by the US Bill of Rights.
But critical race theory rejects the rights within the US Bill of Rights because somehow they lead to a systemically racist society. Critical race theory furthermore rejects the individual. In critical race theory, as per Marxist ideology, every person is understood in terms of the social groups they inhabit, and these are determined by their identity. Races are constructs that societies invent through prejudice. Thus, the goal of ID of treating every person as an individual who is equal before the law and meant to be judged by the content of their character and their words or deeds is now rejected by critical race theory as a myth used to further extend the oppression of uh, particular racial minorities. Democracy focuses on individual rights. Social justice focuses on the emancipation of the group, regardless of the impact of the individuals within that group. A classic example of social justice warrior ideology are the housing projects of New York, where everybody in the group has identical housing outcomes, but it also leads to abject misery on the part of those who are living within that group. Another classical implication of critical race theory is the rejection of what uh, Dr. Martin Luther King said. When Martin Luther King said that he yearned for a day when we are judged not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. That idea has been profoundly and utterly rejected by critical race theory today. If, if somebody were to say that today, they would be accused of being a white supremacist and perpetuating white uh, racial oppression of African Americans in America. And why do I say that? Because intersectionality requires you to be defined by immutable characteristics, such as the color of your skin. And if you are born, for instance, as an African American, and you are automatically an oppressor, and you can never be uh, an oppressed individual, you can never be an oppressor. Whereas Martin Luther King said, we, we dreamt of a day when we are judged by the thoughts of our minds and the motions of our hearts and the hand, deeds of our hands. That is how we should judge one another rather than by the color of our skin. So even today, Martin Luther King um, is rejected by critical race theories for being antithetically opposed to what they're teaching today. Critical race theory furthermore rejects all alternatives such as liberal color blindness as also being racist. For liberal ideals of an open society, of judging people by the content of their character rather than by the color of their skins, of working for full equality before the law, and of seeking to ensure equality of opportunity are all rejected as they allegedly ignore and in fact perpetuate the systemic racism and therefore that people experience in America and therefore the entire system in America needs to be destroyed or evaporated and replaced with an all-powerful all Marxist state that will impose identical socioeconomic outcomes for all racial groups. Critical race theory furthermore declares that those who disagree with it, even in the black community, are also driven by racism. Critical race theory determines, predetermines the lived experience of every racial group. You are either oppressor or oppressed, and requires every member of every racial group to affirm those different lived experiences. So if you are born white, you are automatically an oppressor. If you are born black, you are automatically oppressed. When an African-American man such as Kanye West rejects critical race theory, he is publicly condemned by leading critical race theory ideologues as being no longer black. Thus, to be black now is a political identity, not an ethnic identity. Diversity is only skin deep, for everybody's politics must be identical. And finally, critical race theory is totalitarian. James Lindsay argues that critical race theory cannot be disagreed with, especially by African Americans, because it rejects all alternatives and it denies all racial progress as a mirage due to the interest convergence hypothesis. And because it rejects science as a system of white racist thinking, critical race theory cannot be falsified or proven wrong by evidence. And because it assumes racism is present and relevant in all situations and all interactions, even the acceptance of critical race theory is a form of racism. Therefore, critical race theory can never be satisfied and will tear everything apart that gets too close to it. It will tear your marriage apart, it will tear your home apart, it will tear your church apart, it will tear your institutions apart, and it will tear your nation apart. And this is exactly what is happening across America in 2021. So, is critical race theory impacting Adventism? Is it impacting the Adventist world in the North American division, our home division here in the United States and Canada, and those islands in the Caribbean and Atlantic? Is it affecting us here? I would argue that yes, it is. 
Now, I'm not going to go into any specifics. I'm going to leave you, if you're a parent or a student, to do your own research. But I'm going to give you some pointers, some clues that critical race theory has found its way into your institution. And if critical race theory has found its way into your institution, you need to think long and hard about whether you send your children to that institution, whether you remain as a student in that institution, or whether you remain as an employee of what is essentially now an atheist um, institution that may have the name Adventist, but is actually um, uh, uh, teaching functional atheism to the young people who are entrusted to its care. So these are some clues to look for. If your institution is going down these part, this path, you, you need to think very carefully about your continued participation in that institution. Firstly, has your institution pledged to be a safe space? Safe space is not abstract language. It is not neutral language. Safe space, as we saw in Wrong Think 2, has a very definite meaning. It is rooted in critical theory in general and in the doctrine of inclusion in particular. Inclusion means turning your organization into an inclusive environment, a so-called safe space, that cannot allow feelings of marginalization or exclusion for any protected group, such as LGBTQ or trans individuals, or their lived experiences, their subjective lived experiences of oppression. In order to maintain a safe space for all students on the college campus, this requires silencing the gospel call to repentance and faith, deplatforming any who speak of overcoming the sins of the flesh in our era. And it is only a matter of time before the gospel itself would be declared hate speech, even maybe on some of our own campuses, because the gospel violates the principle of a safe space and inclusion. So the first clue to look for is, is your institution now a safe space? Has it declared itself to be a safe space? The first clue that your organization is pushing um, atheism and critical race theory. The second clue, clue is, is your institution talking about um, rooting out unconscious or implicit bias? Unconscious bias training and diversity training were operationalized by the widespread adoption of Harvard's implicit association test, which sought to identify who you believe is a member of an in-group and how you, who you believe is a member of an out-group. Two out of the three academics who developed it have now publicly admitted that the implicit association test cannot do what it alleges to do with any accuracy. Unconscious bias training is rooted in the critical race theory dogma of intersectionality. The idea that the West is a dark and deadly matrix of oppression for all except cisgender heterosexual white males. This matrix is forever shifting, depending on personal identity, gender fluidity, sexual orientation fluidity, trans ideology, and leads to nothing but bitter division as different groups compete to get the most oppressed group status. The third factor to be looking for is whether your organization has adopted critical race theory and functional atheism, is whether it has become an anti-racist institution. Anti-racism meant many things in 2018 and 2019, but after the publication of the book by Ibram X. Kendi on how to be an anti-racist in 2020, anti-racism takes on a new technical meaning. This is explicit critical race theory ideology. Racism is no longer uh, defined as prejudice or hatred of, of one person towards another of a different ethnic or racial group, but it has been continually redefined and broadened to meet the ever-increasing demands of racial justice. No longer is it merely prejudice from one ethnic group against another, which means theoretically anybody can be a racist. Then it became power plus prejudice equals racism, that was the formula, and as whites allegedly hold all power with white supremacy, therefore by definition only whites can be prejudiced or racist, and nothing an African American can ever say is racist, at the most it can be prejudiced, but an African American by definition can never be racist because African Americans do not hold social power under the power plus prejudice equals racism formula. But the famous book How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi first further expands the definition of racism. For Kendi, anti-racism means supporting and institutionalizing policies that equalize racial disparities across all ethnic groups, while racism consists of any policy or any idea that results in social inequity. You are either racist or anti-racist. Merely not to be racist means that you still are a racist. You are only not a racist if you become an anti-racist. That is, if you want to become, if you want to be an anti-racist, if you do not want to be labeled a racist, you must join in the push for a totalitarian Marxist superstate that will ha have the policies to eliminate all unequal outcomes across society. So people of goodwill 
Conservative and liberals alike of all ethnic backgrounds, because they're so afraid of being called racist, they jump on the anti-racist bandwagon, which is a means of corralling people who don't want to be called racist and who are people of goodwill into the Marxist camp, and uh, w which means the elimination of the freedoms that we all enjoy here in America. Any culture within the USA that promotes education or hard work or savings or respect for women and the nuclear family and the delay of gratification for future reward will actually tend to advance farther along all other things being equal than any culture that does not hold those values. To ignore that disparities may have other contributing factors, or sorry, to argue that disparities may have other contributing factors within groups, other than being the exclusive result of systemic white racism and black, vic black victimization, is now a racist position in and of itself. Kendi ignores the fact that never in human history, in any society, in any part of the world, have there been identical outcomes on all dimensions for any two ethnic groups in any society. So, in the USA, we have many ethnic groups with significantly better socioeconomic outcomes than the white population, such as Indian Americans, Filipino Americans, Taiwanese Americans, Sri Lankan Americans, Japanese Americans, Chinese Americans, and Pakistani Americans. Yet Kendi still interprets the world through a rigid white racism, black victimization binary that bears no relation to the complexities of a multicultural, multi-ethnic United States of America. Yet, so long as racial differentials exist, critical race theories, theorists automatically blame systemic racism and justifies any and every measure, including the elimination of all of your freedoms, to eliminate such differentials. Anyone who questions this approach is socially destroyed by being labelled racist and being put socially cancelled. Thus, to be anti-racist or progressive means working towards a spiritually atheist and politically Marxist and uh, totalitarian form of government across the United States of America. And the fourth clue to look for, uh, whether your institution is now an atheist critical race theory um, institution, is look at the reading lists that are being published. Um, take a look at the reading lists, whether it's on their websites, whether it's on their social justice pages, whether it's in their press statements, whether it's in their classrooms. Um, take a look at the reading lists. Are the books being promoted consistent with scripture? Or are they pushing the writings of critical race theorists in particular and critical theorists in general? These, reading, these recommended reading lists that we often find in college campuses today actually represent the indoctrination of our young people whose parents are paying for an Adventist education but who in effect are being taught atheist, Christ-hating, totalitarian Marxist ideology and are returning home as functional atheists. So what do we say in conclusion today? For parents, for grandparents watching this sermon today, I invite you to carefully reflect before you send your children to any college. Before you pay money, ask yourself whether that college promotes a biblical worldview or whether that institution is promoting an atheist critical race theory worldview. If it is promoting critical race theory worldview, you may think twice about paying for your children to go to a nominally Adventist institution that is actually pushing functional atheism. For local members, please pray that the Holy Spirit will move upon the leadership of our institutions so that they may re remain true to the gospel and not drink of the false gospel of critical race theory. For the leaders of our Worldwide Adventist Church and for those who sit on the boards of our educational institutions, you are entrusted by the members with the institutional responsibility to ensure that our institutions and their leaders stay true to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please uphold your responsibilities. Take them seriously as you sit on your board meetings, or the blood of radicalized, atheist, former Adventist youth will be on your hands. And in all we do, let the truth be spoken in grace. For and in love, for we are all sinners in need of God's grace. May God bless you. May God give you wisdom and insight. May God give you discernment as you chart your way forward. Never forget, never cease to love your neighbor as yourself, no matter who they are or where they are from. Never cease to manifest and demonstrate the love of Christ to everybody you meet and to draw people into the kingdom of grace that one day will be the kingdom of glory. May God bless you. May God empower you. May you be protected by his angels. May you be led by his spirit. And may the love of Jesus shine out of your eyes and be heard in your voice wherever you go. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.